Talk Forty Nine. My guest this morning is Pavel Kaminsky, and Pavel and his family went on holiday on a sheep farm this year. Good morning, Pavel. Good morning, Nigel. Thanks for having me. Thank you for getting up and coming so early. Pavel, you went to a sheep farm on holiday. Why did you go to a sheep farm on holiday? Yeah, why not? I mean, um, the idea was born probably in March of this year. And let me remind you of the situation. This was probably one of the lo lockdowns, uh, being locked in a small Venice flat. There is nothing else that you would want more than big space and, you know, freedom, uh, which I associate a lot with, you know, kind of nature and let's say farming too. Uh, so this was how was how the idea was born to spend some time of the summer working or he helping at one farm and we decided to stay in Austria also to you know skip all the inconvenience that goes along with traveling in times of corona. Was this a mountain farm? Yeah, it was. It was. It was like a, at the high of 1000 meters um, in western Styria. What expectations? did you take with you? Maybe it's important to say what was like the frame of, of this whole undertaking, what was the occasion. Um, so we used this program called uh, WOOF, W-W-O-O-F, uh, which stands for uh, wor Worldwide Opportunities, uh, how it's, <laughs> let, me, let me think, uh, for Organic uh, Farms. And yeah, so it's a program which has a long tradition actually. It's been uh, there for 50 years. And it's a global network where you can really search and find uh, mostly organic farm and um, offer your work for, for a bit of time. And in return, you get everything you need, like accommodation, food, and you being treated like um, member of a family for for this period of time so this is how we came up with this idea and i had uh i had this experience from 2019 where i did woofing for the first time i went to uh, greece to corfu where i worked on another farm but first time i was alone and this time this summer i thought i was sure this might be something which which um could work for the whole family. And you asked about the expectations. Uh, this is an important question if you plan going, doing, uh, you know, woofing voluntary time, because um, you live close with, with, with a family mostly. Uh, you have to do, you have some work to do, but you have, you have also some time on your own. So it's good to know yourself, your needs, your expectations to be able to talk about it. Like, because you have to, you know, uh, um, you have to um, get along with the accommodation that you are offered, with the food that you are offered. So it's good to know and to clear those questions in advance. What ideas did you have in advance concerning sheep? Um, not much idea, to be honest. Um, but sheep was kind of result of our wish. We wanted to go on a farm, to be on a farm which keeps animals. Uh, this was interesting for us, this kind of interaction that we miss in Vienna or in our lives. And, but we knew at the same time, we don't want it to be cows because um, we had this experience from being uh, around, you know, like uh, on some trip and you can smell uh, the villages where cows are being kept and with sheep we had this association they are somehow um, uh, you know friendlier, friend, friendlier in this matter so we decided let's deal with sheep they, they are also you know smaller animals which uh, you shouldn't be that much afraid of as maybe big cows what are sheep's characters like are they friendly can you stroke them 
Yeah, that's an important question because um, this is like the the picture that we have, you know, sheep, fluffy animals that you can. But it's not really the case, or maybe this wasn't in in this case so much uh, the issue. Why so? You know, we spend time at farm which keeps um, traditional breed of sheep. And uh, it's a breeding farm, which means they are not being uh, kept for milk. And it means, as a consequence, that, is that they spend a lot of time on their own, like being outside without human uh, interaction. So they are not so much uh, acquainted to humans human beings and their behavior is very much like of a group and if you know one sheep decides to uh, turn around and run everyone else would follow it so like um, we didn't it wasn't really possible like to you know uh, um, stroke them but our luck was uh, there were also donkeys in this farm so we could uh, struck donkeys a bit your wife Belinda and your 11-year-old son, Femi. How did they get on with this close contact with nature? Oh, they loved it. They loved it and there are different aspects, you know, uh, because I mentioned donkeys and uh, there was also a dog and a cat or more dogs because uh, what was important on this farm, you had not only sheep, but you had um, uh, um, um, sheep dogs. And this is a story for itself because they are extremely well trained and intelligent uh, animals. So it was fascinating to to be a part of this system to help a bit, and they enjoyed it. I mean, it's a it's an another it's a different concept of spending your spare your free time your holidays because you you have some work to do, but this work is so much different from answering uh, another email. You know, within one day uh, we were so much uh, outside uh, you know being physically active having beautiful landscape around um, yeah they, they loved it you mentioned the sheep dogs how did your son get on with the dogs our luck was that we stayed on a farm where very wise people were in charge and they were able to to teach us a lot about the animals and also the dogs. And um, they also make us understand that the way people tend to treat dogs, you know, in big cities, uh, it's very often wrong because dogs are, you know, our closest friends, but still animals. And you cannot, like, you shouldn't misplace a child or your partner with a dog, which you know, sometimes happens. And there it is obvious that dogs are part of this uh, collective. They are co-workers, they are, they are working animals, uh, which means they are treated with a lot of respect, but they are being trained, which means there is this um, kind of line that you shouldn't cross between being in communication, being respectful, spending time, but uh, you should let them know who is in charge. What breed of dogs are these sheep dogs? These are border collies. Um, for example, just to give you an example and not to be to be so abstract, um, the, as we learned, these dogs are very um, hasty, like you know, running around. So the kind of a way people treat the dogs very often is to kind of uh, aggravate or to 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 uh, you know to be very playful with them but what we learned actually what you should do with them is is completely the opposite you should try to keep them calm and try to give them some kind of uh, release because otherwise they will be stressed you know so uh, they tend to be very playful and you know very active but your task as a human who is kind of uh, working with them is to try to keep them calm and focused because this is what they also do while work working with sheep and um, yeah so we, we had some learnings and, and there is also like a, a leader dog out of you know the crew uh, which is also uh, trained in a, another way um, or another interesting fact 
uh, the dogs while working they have to do different tasks so each dog or some of the dogs are um, taught um, the commands in different languages in order not to you know chaos let hap uh, you know um, to prevent the chaos so with one dog he receives command in English and the other in German, for example, which was interesting to, to observe. So the dogs speak both German and English. <laughs> yeah, you can say so, yeah, for sure. Pavel, how important are whistles in this human dog chain of command? No, not at all, not at all, N not in this case. Uh, the only tool was human voice, actually. How long does it take to train a sheepdog? It takes years and not each dog is really um, like, you know, uh, it, you need some special features. So n not every dog can be really trained and become a working dog. How involved were you in other jobs like sharing, cutting the wool, milking and making cheese and so on? In this case, I mean, uh, you know, cutting the wool wasn't a topic because it happens uh, twice a year, um, but not during the summer. And also milking wasn't the case because, uh, as I said, it's a breeding farm. Um, so the animals are kept just, you know, to provide next generation of animals for different uh, farms, other farms. And some of them are being uh, indeed slaughtered for, uh, for meat. But uh, this, this daily um, kind of tasks wasn't so much involved. But what we did was, um, you know, the, the whole, um, how you call it in English, like herd, <laughs> you know, the, um, were about 180, but they were divided into different groups, like rams only or feeding uh, mothers. So um, sometimes we needed to bring one group from one spot to another. Uh, this, of course, with a huge help of dogs, and um, it's a fascinating, um, very tense, uh, actually, task to do, because, you know, as soon as they are done with one meadow, like they ate all grass, you have to find another spot and bring them there. This is what we did, or what we did also was, from time to time, you have to, like, check up you know, how they grow, how, how is their well-being. So we would bring them um, to the, back to the farm to, to inspect them. So this was where also where we uh, helped a lot. Also my son, like assisting um, two ladies who run this uh, farm. Tell us a little bit about the family you stayed with. How easy was it making friends with them? It was easy. It was astonishingly easy. Um, we were picked up by Barbara. Uh, so uh, Barbara she has been uh, running this this place for thirty years, and she picked up. Uh, she picked us up with a car, and I would say already during this you know uh, ride we were able to connect well, and. You know, I think the, I, the, the clue is to have enough space for each one, every, everyone, but also to have some times together. And we were, we had very comfortable uh, situation having our own rooms. So we had also opportunity to, you know, have our privacy if we wanted. But I don't know, like through conversations, through work that we've done together, we really were able to connect and develop friendships, I, I guess. What did you discuss in the evenings? In the evenings we were in beds because, you know, if you walk during the day on a mountain with animals, uh, normally our day would end at 8 and shortly after we would all fall asleep. We would talk rather in the morning and um, and it was interesting because Barbara and Teresa, both of them, they do not only run this farm, but they, you know, what they do is, is their life philosophy too. Um, so we were able to learn about farming as it is today, as it should be today. And this was um, like lessons that, you know, lessons that we could learn in addition to those daily tasks that you need to do. 
And I think it's an uh, interesting topic and it's becoming more interesting. I, I would like to mention that just these days a new book of Falter chef redactor uh, Florian Klenk will appear uh, with this title um, Bauer, and Bauer and Bobo and it's his touch on, on um, farming as it is today, a uh, critical report and um, this is this like this kind of reflection we had a lot in our conversations in in Styria too. What about the natural enemies of sheep, bears, and wolves? They're back again. Yeah, um, <coughs> indeed, uh, wolves uh, present a problem for them, which was an important and interesting perspective for me because I would see myself as someone who is, you know, very much into environmental um, topics, and um, um, yeah, and and I would be, I still am somehow very welcoming and open in my mind having this you know image of wolves coming back but th th there i learned the different perspective and i can understand it um because you know as a br as breeding farm there is not much you can do against it because you you know if you lose an animal it can be replaced by money because breeding is is about you know, keeping the animals which are really which 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 have good gene, genes, which are important for the next generations, and if uh, an animal like this will be killed, um, no money will make it better, and it's hard to protect them. Like very often, you hear the argument, "Why not using um, dogs?" But uh, as I learned, these would be different dogs than the sheep dogs. You know, it's it's like another breed which is very big and aggressive, which brings bring its own risks with itself. Like these these dogs are really difficult to handle to manage. So um, yeah, the, and bears, it is a topic because like we were almost directly at, at the Slovenian bo border. So just behind the border, you have uh, bears many of them and just let me tell you this short anecdote i was to slovenia two weeks ago uh, i was hiking with my friends and on our way back to austria we stopped at the guest house a regular one this was not a like special kind of restaurant and in the menu we saw very quickly like they, they are offering bear's meat and different meals involving bear's meat and i was like is it a joke right now? I asked the waiter and he said, no, like we have too many bears and so we have to shoot them. And um, yeah, but at the same time, he discouraged us from <laughs> ordering these meals because he said it tastes a bit sweet and he, he pers like personally, he doesn't eat it at all. I was shocked and I still am, to be honest, because in other countries, bears are still endangered species. You mentioned people eating bears. How important is eating meat for you, in particular lamb? Uh, my answer would be very simple to this question. If you want to eat meat, if you find it's important uh, or good for, to you, that's where you would eat meat. You know, not going to uh, to. Uh, any supermarket or whatever because there, there you know that the animals live are treated with respect are, aren't like the animals there are part of this circular kind of you know economy like they are not feed with any additional proteins with soybeans or whatever they just live from herbs and grass um, they live until, you know, an age where they aren't babies anymore. So, um, yeah, so if you want to eat meat, you should have this kind of source um, of production and not any other one. And yes, we've tried the local meat. Um, and but I have to tell you, like people who keep meat, keep animals and produce meat in this way, they do not eat a lot themselves because they know how precious it is, how expensive it is. So we ate, I think, twice 
for me, this was anyway not a big question. Uh, but for my son, for example, like prior to being there, he said he's not sure if he would be able to to try meat from animals that he like gets in contact with. But he ate. He ate because I think he saw for himself. Yeah, like that's the way. Uh, this might work, you know, also in, in ethical terms. You had two weeks on a farm, lots and lots of good fun, lots and lots of hard work, fresh air, great meals, and a wonderful family. Pavel Kaminsky, one last question. If you were to come back in a future life, would you consider being a sheep farmer? I would say farmer anyways, uh, working with animals, it's, it's a matter of, you know, experience and, and time. But yes, yeah, sure, beautiful experience. A beautiful experience, a great place to end. Pavel Kaminsky, thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Talk 49. 49. 49. 49.